Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be talking about everyone's favourite tiny hat wearing ultimate and that's Bob, who seems to be even more popular than the actual hero he's associated with Ash. Getting the most out of him is deceptively not that straightforward. He's actually incredibly easy to waste, so today's video is about making the most out of this very fun and potentially devastating ult. Now a lot of the principles I'm going to talk about today I learned from Dallas Fuel's Effect. The Ash video guide I made centered around his gameplay has been very popular and Effect showcases some very effective uses for Bob. So the clips today will be a mix of his and a few of mine where I'm capable of replicating what he does. Effect is one of my absolute favorite pros to watch, he's arguably the best or one of the best Ash players around, so if you're looking to learn more, I highly recommend you go check out his stream, which I will link in the description box below. Now to really start, I have some ideas about how to conceptualize Bob that I want you to internalize. On one hand, he's very comparable to the old Molten Core Ultimate as it pertained to Torb's turret. So what I mean by that is he's very difficult to deal with when he's placed where you have to peek into his line of sight to reach objectives. Torb's old playstyle was built around catching attacks through Molten Core as his turret would make it virtually impossible to take or retake space when it was active. Now Torp had to build up to that and he had to make sure his turret was in a position to get value in the first place, but Bob is much more fluid than that. You can place him pretty much anywhere you want and suddenly he's there. This means it's much easier to wrong foot opponents on the fly. So not only does he have the strengths of a turret in that if you have to peek into him, you're going to have to take the requisite steps not to die, which usually means not being able to go where you actually want, and he can be placed behind you once you've committed, which a turret could never really do. The strength of that is underappreciated, and if you time it right, stuff him against the right geometry, he can be easy value for days. This works really well on maps like Volskaya or Hanamura B, as the point has plenty of places you can put him with relative certainty. Even if he doesn't get kills himself, he can funnel enemies into your teammates or your own line of sight. Creating this extra angle for yourself and your team allows you to control where the enemy can physically be, which is very relevant in modes where they actually have to be somewhere specific. To apply it to another game mode, stuffing Bob against a car in, say, Payload can get real value because he is essentially another tank for your team for a short period of time. He also counts as far as stalling is concerned, so he can buy you vital time to reach an objective way before you can yourself, which then allows you to make some plays. He really does, if used well, create space just like a real tank. He can even be used to spawn trap and stop teams from making it to an objective in time. Imagine if you could place a Molten Core turret outside your enemy's spawn in overtime. He works best not facing their spawn, but just outside it facing back into the map as then your enemies can't shoot him from safety and either have to peek into his damage or just wait for him to go away. All the while, you're hopefully shooting them in the face yourself. There are even more advanced plays that you can make with him, but I think now is a good time to understand the part about him that seems deceptively straightforward and catches a lot of people out, and that's how to actually summon him properly. How Bob works. Bob's basic summon function is he appears directly five to six meters in front of you in the direction you aim and runs in a straight line, only stopping when he collides with geometry or another hero model. This counts from when you press the button, so jumping forwards does make a difference, which opens up more advanced uses we'll cover later. There's a few caveats to this simple rule though. If your view is partially obstructed on one side or the other, he'll appear over the opposite shoulder, which is important to remember if you're trying to stuff him into a wall or an object that's too narrow because he can sort of auto correct sometimes and go too wide from where you wanted him to go which is not ideal. He can also get stuck on door frames and the like if you misjudge this. Interestingly he also as soon as he lands does a little hop jump and comes off the ground again. This has quite a long range actually, it's roughly 10 meters. This is useful to know because as soon as you understand that, you can make him jump over gaps instead of falling into them, which although often hilarious, is not what you want. What you want to do is be far enough back from a ledge so that he'll land on its edge and jump again, flying over a gap that you yourself would be able to make for instance. That's a good rule of thumb. If you can make the jump, Bob can too, as long as you space out this initial landing into his hop well enough. Once you understand and how he is deployed in this way, you can avoid the embarrassing hi Bob, bye Bob, literal pitfalls of trying to make him go where you want. A note on that, however tempting it might be to do otherwise, always make sure your 
you're aiming him at an angle where he will eventually hit a wall. This seems obvious, but often isn't. It's not really advisable to rely on hitting an enemy on say Gibraltar third attack, because his sprint is essentially a Rhine pin, but without the directional control Rhine has. So stuffing him against things, as we call it, is your best bet to at least make sure he has a chance of doing that something. Your placement of where to stuff him is a key part of optimizing him actually, and it makes all the difference between essentially being a man up in a team fight and having Bob feed ineffectually, which is much easier to have happen than you might think. In this way, it's useful to compare him to a diva bomb. Diva bomb is very all or nothing in terms of its placement. The cuter you are in where you put it, the more likely it is to get kills. And by cute, I mean, if you just fire it into the air directly at a team out in the open, it's not that hard for them to avoid by kiting away or by using shielding. It gets really dangerous when it's placed where kiting isn't easy and there isn't geometry or shielding to protect people. Backlines all over the world get blown up by D.Va if there's no cover for them to reach quickly and their tanks are too far away. Bob can be used like that too, but he can actually do the separating himself. Effect is very good at placing Bob where enemies cannot run away from fast enough, be that either behind them or down a corridor. And because Ash can be very dynamic with her own positioning, Bob can suddenly come out of nowhere and wreck you from an angle you totally didn't expect. It's also important to think of him like an actual tank sometimes. If you just send him into an enemy formation without care, the same thing happens to him that would happen to an overeager Ryan who pins in on his own, stuns, sleeps, focuses dead. At least he doesn't give them ult charge, but this is still a waste. It's also very useful to think of what angle you're creating when you place him. A way to be very effective is to place him in such a way that you create a crossfire between his damage and your own threat. If the enemy has to choose between protecting themselves from Bob or you and the rest of your team, the price can be very heavy for them. Advanced uses. Right, so I just want to show you this clip from Effect where he's playing King's Row 3rd defense. At first, he jumps up here to contest the enemy Ash and uses Bob to try and stuff him up there. Now, he gets very lucky in that Bob actually hits the enemy Ash and stops on this high ground. This is a horrible place for him to be for his opponents and despite it being somewhat unintended, does show the power of putting Bob in places that are very hard for enemies to do anything about. A great example that we thought of is this ledge on Hanamura B as if you're attacking. Coach Gun allows Ash to be in a very hard to deal with spot herself, but you can also put Bob in hideous places to great effect. Stuffing him against this back wall means that he can shoot down onto point with impunity, and perhaps even better, the way his shooting mechanics work, where he fires from is where his head is. He can effectively shoot through the floor while enemies are only able to see him partially. There's spots like this all over many maps in the game. Blue Box on Gibraltar First is another good example whether you're attacking or defending. Try to think of where you would ideally love to place a molten core turret but never could because Torb couldn't reach them. Well Coach Gun and Bob is the stuff of your dreams and your enemies nightmares. There are some other uses I've spoken briefly about in the previous effect guide and one was using Bob to protect yourself by stuffing him against a wall next to you. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to stay up top on high ground with Bob in the places we've shown for extra damage. Bob can also be used in close proximity to you or your team to shut down other ultimates that are looking to get value on your team, like a Genji Blade. Forcing a Genji to reflect during Blade is big time impact, and if you can clutch that out, you can end up the hero. It is largely dependent on having something to stuff him against close at hand, however, so do keep that in mind. In conclusion then, Bob is very capable of doing the something that Ash demands of him, but you just have to take a little care of how and where you call upon him. He's very dexterous actually, just like Ash herself, and remember, man advantage when trying to cap or push a payload home is a really big deal, providing you don't put Bob somewhere he can't see anything from. Like I said, think to yourself, where would I least like to be shot from if I were an enemy trying to contest on either side? That's Bob's home, his happy place. Send him there and you will be rewarded. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the your Overwatch Twitter so where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump and until next time, 